of HITC Sport. I am the Irish guy. And I'm also a predictions god! I'm sorry, did anyone else predict Rangers to draw 2-2 with Russia Dortmund on Thursday night? Honestly, where's my predictions crown? Anyway, what's this? Premier League game week uh, 26, I think? Right, let's go! Southampton versus Norwich. What has happened to Southampton? I mean, does somebody want to tell me? This time last year, you were getting spanked 9-0 for the second season in a row. You know, just a month after they beat Liverpool. And Ralph Hasnoodle very quickly showed the composure of Alexander Burke when she won the X Factor. You know, sobbing like a horse. Hormonal horse. Ozzy, to me, treating a one goal win over a crippled Liverpool, where they had a centre back pairing of Jordan Henderson and Fabinho, an out of form Trent, and honestly, a manager who looked so grumpy. I mean, you wouldn't be surprised if the paparazzi filmed Klopp beating up lollipop ladies outside the ground after the match. To me, Ralph Hasnut had a small time mentality and with the defensive organisation of a chewy toothbrush. I mean, we've seen Marcelo Bielsa take liberties in defence lately, but Ozzy, two nine nils in a row. I thought Hasnut was destined for the sack, and that now, by all rights, he should. Have Daniel Fark's job at FC Krasnodar, right? But uh, no, Ralph has proved me wrong. I mean, he's hustled all of us because my tips for relegation at the start of the season are now 10th in the league and just one defeat in 11 games. W what's going on? You were deprived of Danny Ings this season, replaced him with a 20 million pound lump of candle wax and Adam Armstrong, who, uh, yeah, surprise, surprise, has massively flopped. If you were going to sign a championship goal machine, ah! Maybe look at Alexander Mitrovic, not some Jordy boy with the footballing ability of Kylie Minogue. I mean, forgetting this team didn't win any of the first seven league games. And yet, they're 10th? 10th! Well, turns out Armando Brogia is the real deal. He's, uh, the Albanian James Bond. And honestly, barring a child strike from Chelsea is a risk. I mean, just ask all the Premier League chairmen who kept pulling their hair out and Patrick Bamford spent about five years looking like an immobile wheelbarrow. I mean, in the Premier League, he was someone who had the muscle strength of a wet tea cosy. But Brogia, he's been brilliant. Electric. Uh, eight goals already. As for Norwich, they've improved under Dean Smith. A little bit. But that's still eight defeats and three draws from 14 games. Chucking the fact they're back down bottom of the league again, and I'm guessing that's enough to demoralize the fan base. So yeah, 3 0 Southampton win. Very, very easy. And James Ward Prowse is gonna bang in a penalty. Leeds versus Tottenham. This. This is a clash of the midlife crisis. Both Antonio Conte and Marcelo Bielsa are two of the most brilliant tactical minds in football. And yeah, here they are, both of them looking about as happy as anyone married to Katie Hopkins. Just, ah, uh, no thanks. Considering how great these managers are, you wouldn't be surprised if Conte versus Bielsa was a clash between Chelsea and Man City. Not, you know, Spurs versus Leeds. You know, the Robbie Keane derby. I mean, Conte, one minute, he's dancing about like that weird penguin of happy feet. You know, dancing down the Eddie had touchline. The next, he's threatening to resign. Four defeats in five games. He's embarrassed. He didn't even want the gig originally. He said no in the summer, so clearly he's about as committed to the Tottenham project as Tiger Woods is to his wife. As for Bielsa, this is embarrassing. One point from your last available 15. And you can see the 16 goals in four games. You've lost 7-0, 6-0 and 5-1 this season. I mean, if this was someone else in charge, like Alan Pardew or Mark Hughes in the dugout getting these sort of results, then yeah, the Leeds fans would be on the verge of pulling out their own teeth in disgust. I mean, it's just sad what's happening to both of these coaches. As for this game, I think it's going to be a Tottenham win. Leeds are in utter free fall and listen, travelling to Burnley on a wet and cold windy Wednesday night, that is a tough game for anybody. I mean, come on, it's like going for a picnic on the edge of a volcano in Poland. Losing there isn't really any great change, but an early Early morning kickoff at a deflated Ellen Road in the sun. Ah, much easier job for Spurs. I mean, don't forget, right now, the least offence is about as solid as a plate of diarrhea. It's completely all over the place. Poor old Ilan Melier is probably having to read self-help books on the internet. I'll go for a 3-1 Tottenham win with Kane bagging in a hat-trick. Easy win. Brentford versus Newcastle. Brentford versus Newcastle. Right, if this fixture took place in August, you know, with a vibrant, optimistic Brentford crowd coming up against a stale Newcastle team trudging along under Steve Bruce, only one winner. But here's the narrative. A team have lost six of the last seven games against a team unbeaten in the last six. This is a defensive makeover inspired by Eddie Howe. Newcastle conceded just four goals in the last six matches. That is unheard of. There's only one winner here. I know Ivan Tony has probably spent the last 12 months dreaming about shoving the doubts of Geordies back down their throats by smacking in a hat-trick, but no. Nah, sorry, you're not gonna get much service here. While Newcastle, with a rock-solid centre-back pairing of Dan Byrne and Fabian Schaar, that was a maximum returning from injury. Oh, sorry lads. Newcastle are riding the crest of a wave. And yeah, I'm going for a 2-0 Newcastle win with Chris Wood netting his first goal. 
sorry, Brentford. But once again, you're getting chewed alive on your way to relegation. Brighton versus Aston Villa. All right, so it's been two weeks of mostly hell for both of these coaches. I mean, Graham Potter just watched his hipster-esque Brighton team picked apart 3-0 at home by Burnley, while Stevie G just watched his Villa side lose against two teams who were in the relegation zone without scoring a goddamn goal. Honestly, right now, he's trying to decide between Ollie Watkins and Danny Ings. The truth is that both resemble mostly profligate wet turkeys. I mean, whatever about Watkins, it's almost impressive that you've managed to turn Ings, someone who last summer was being linked with Manchester City, you've managed to turn him into 2022's answer to Milan Barosh. I mean, anyone remember him at Villa Park? Yeah, he was mostly wet moosely in a Villa shirt. Honestly, this version of Ings makes Gary Lee Bunhor look world class. I'm gonna call it. This is a direct battle between two of the most overrated English managers on the planet. Honestly, both these guys are tipped to replace Pep Guardiola and Klopp. I mean, they're both joint favourites for the England job. Based on what? Titles in Scotland and Sweden? But yeah, because that worked out so well for Roy Hodgson, didn't it? The smart money's on a 1-1 draw, right? I mean, isn't it? 1-1, that's... That's the obvious score. But I just have a feeling this Villa run can't keep going like this. I have a feeling Gerard is going to spend the last week putting them through their paces. I mean, this guy's pride is probably so hurt, he's probably just whipping them like a cow and forcing them to eat lunch in an ice bath. Just anything, because he needs the three points. And so yeah, I'll go for a very late 2-1 Aston Villa win with John McGinn banging in the winning goal for 25 yards. Just you watch. It's gonna be 1-1 now, isn't it? Crystal Palace versus Burnley. Crystal Palace really needed that win at Watford, didn't they? I mean, they hadn't won any of the last six matches before that. Patrick Vieira was very quickly beginning to sweat like a pig in a slaughterhouse. And so if he'd watch his new look Palace project get beaten by the old man he'd replaced, oh, he wouldn't really be able to look his boss in the eye for a month. But no, Wilfred Zaha's back on form, scoring wonder goals for fun. But Burnley, you do not want to play Burnley right now. In the last month, they've ground out a clean sheet at the Emirates, held Manchester United to a draw, almost snatched the point from Liverpool, smashed Brighton 3-0 and beat Tottenham at home. This is a team 18th in the league and yet I've kept four clean sheets from six games, conceding just two goals. I mean, shove a Burnley defender in your fancy league team right now, good Christ. On the sidelines, this is a managerial battle between a former Arsenal and Juventus midfielder, a guy who won a goddamn World Cup, versus a former Millwall and Chesterfield centre half. I mean, as a player, Deich would have probably begged the Air Force autograph so he could settle on eBay to buy himself some new shoes, but as managers, sorry Paddy, but you're getting utterly spanked here. I'm gonna go for a 2-0 Burnley win. They're going to utterly boss the midfield. Connor Gallagher is gonna very quickly resemble Lindsay Lowen in a pair of football boots. It's gonna be utter Burnley domination with Ralph Weghorst and Connor Roberts smacking home the goals. Just you watch. Man United versus Watford. I think it's safe to say that Manchester United fans hate Watford. Come on, they lost 4-1 to this brutal beefcake sandwich of a football team in Ollie's last match. And that wasn't even Solskjaer's first loss to Watford as Man United boss. Honestly, it was just embarrassing. Ralph Rennick, whatever you do, don't lose this game. Clearly the match is not a boardroom, don't take kindly to losing to this football team. Listen to me, Watford are dead and buried. I know they sneak to win at Villa Park, but let's be real, you've asked an elderly pensioner to rescue you from trouble. Roy Hodgson probably can't even remember his own birthday, let alone the name of his left back, so they this should, it should be an easy and routine win for Ralph. Especially now that the Man United team are slowly regaining some confidence as the weeks go by. Listen, Watford will dig in and make it awkward at Old Trafford. Moose is a so cool, probably hit the post at nil-nil. But in the end, I'm gonna go for a pretty easy 2-0 Man United win. Goals for Cristiano Ronaldo and Oh yeah, flavor of the month, Anthony Alanga. You know, February 22's answer to Federico Makeda. Uh, uh, okay, that's a bit harsh, isn't it? Alanga might be too young to remember Makeda, but uh, that man is probably a terrifying warning to any young child coming through. Honestly, Makeda. He's a, he's a bit like football's answer to whoever voiced Meg Griffin in Family Guy Season 1. I mean, they're probably now both working down the local Burger King, trying to scrape rat feces off the underside of chicken burgers. But anyway, yeah, easy tune little Man United win, obviously. Uh, of course. Everton versus Man City. Man City are rattled. Don't think that they're not. Is it just me who finds it weird that whenever Man City start to slip up in the league, they're then immediately given a trip to Goodison Park, putting Everton in that weird position of doing Liverpool a favour. Honestly, it was the same in the spring of 2014. Everton were literally Steven Gerrard's last hope. And Ross Barkley actually stuck the toppies 1-0 up before Man City wound up winning 3-1. But also, three years ago, just two weeks after City lost at Newcastle, which looked like it was hand-wrapping the title to Anfield, they then travelled to Goodison Park for a tricky tie, a defeat there would have ended their title hopes, 
and yet they won. Similarly, this is a tough game. And I think the Goodison Park atmosphere will be electric. Richarlison will get Everton a 1-0 lead at half time. Frank Lampard will jump around like a drunk Peter Pan. And Liverpool fans will be so nervous, they'll probably be sitting on their couch getting sick on their stomach. Whilst Michael Richards will not laugh at half time. Instead of looking like a jovial court jester, he'll just resemble someone who's just walked in on their grandparents making love in the bath. The smart money would indicate that City will slowly wear them down in the second half, dominate about 85% possession, and make two late goals via Phil Foden and Gabriel Jesus. I mean, that is in my head, but the more I think about it, I think Goodison Park is due a monster performance. Honestly, at least once a year, the stadium becomes a fortress. You know, like when they spanked Man United 4-0 in April 2019. I just think Everton will hold on. It'll be a heroic defensive masterclass. Jordan Pickford will have the game of his life. And yeah, City will get frustrated. Kyle Walker will get sent off. Ozzy, I'm going for a shock. 1-0 Everton win. I, I can just feel it in my bones. West Ham versus Wolves. West Ham are not in a good moment. Challenge you for the Champions League and you take five points from five games. That's not Champions League form, a point per game. Nah, that's what gets you 16th in the goddamn league. They're cracking. David Moyes' team is cracking under pressure. They're just breaking down in front of our eyes. I mean, come on, Mikel Antonio. Two goals in 17 games. Ever since he started that podcast with Callum Wilson, he's, he's just completely fell away. It, it, it's been poor. Really, really poor. As for Wolves, I, they're in good form. Although, honestly, I think we just opened up a new mini rivalry in the league. I mean, because a few years ago, Arsenal had a bit of a small, on pitch beef with Leicester City for a while after some intense matches during that title race. But now, after nicking two one goal wins in the space of two weeks. I'm guessing Wolverhampton Wanderers fans must feel like chucking a bag of eggs at the Emirates. They probably now hate Arsenal with a burning passion. But aside from those two games, then yeah, Wolves have still been good. I'm gonna go for another clean sheet here. Quang Hee Chan will score the only goal of the game in a 1-0 win, leaving West Ham's Champions League hopes in utter patterns. Burnley versus Leicester. Right, so here's Burnley again. Leicester traveling to Turf Moor. You do not want to go there now. It's like a trip to the dentist. Except a dentist who actively swigs cups of vodka whilst he's trying to yank out your filling. Yeah, have fun spending the next three weeks sneezing blood. Ozzy, Brendan Rodgers is probably having sleepless nights about this trip. I, uh, but Ozzy, this is the weekend where Burnley pull themselves out of trouble for good. This is going to be a wake horse goal, a 1-0 Burnley win, and that will be six points on the board and four wins in a row. Suddenly, after this game week, then Burnley are going to be just one point behind Leicester. So, uh, th does that mean Rodgers is in a relegation scrap? Is this like Leicester 2017 all over again? Christ above! Chelsea versus Liverpool. Okay, I know this isn't a Premier League match. Relax, okay? Listen, Liverpool versus Chelsea in a cup final, they're usually pretty intense matches. It's also a throwback to the past where Liverpool and Chelsea used to regularly compete together in the Champions League. So this, I know the League Cup isn't much of a trophy, but... Trust me, both these coaches are going to take this seriously. For this, uh, I think it's going to be a tough game, but Liverpool are the better team, uh, and I just think they're going to sneak it. Chelsea have looked pretty weak in the last few weeks. Romelu Lukaku, uh, seven touches against Palace. Horrific. You know what? I'm going to go for a 2-0 Liverpool win. Mo Salah and Sadio Mane. Sorry, Chelsea, but Liverpool are winning the League Cup. What do you think, right? Let me know in the comments below. What do you think? Put your predictions down below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe as always. I'll talk to you in a while.